35 is where I want to begin at this morning, beginning the chapter. Mark chapter 8, beginning with verse 35 through 38. This is not going to be an easy sermon, even for myself. But God has been just pouring into me all week about God's value system. The word value, as I began to pray this week, just clicked in my spirit and has not left. A lot of times with my memory, if I do not write the word down and he gives it to me, I forget it sometimes. And I did. I forgot it. And I should have had, I should have got a good whipping for it. But he wanted me to know it so much, he told me again. When I asked him, well, what was that word you gave? Boom. And that was my spirit. And I know that's God because I don't remember very good sometimes. But when he wants us to know something, he'll tell us again. Aren't you glad that God deals with you again? Amen. Some people can say again and again and again. Amen. 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 Our God is long-suffering to us. Praise God. Mark chapter 8, we're going to begin reading verse number 35. When you find it, shout amen. Amen. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For it shall it profit a man if he shall gain the world, whole world and lose his own soul. That very scripture right there, he tied in with me when he gave me the word value system. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Ask the Lord's anointing with me this morning, if you will. Father, we thank you for your anointing. We pray for abundance of it, Lord, that I may preach with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, Lord, that I'll have such reverence in this pulpit that the Holy Spirit will have his way. Father, I pray that you anoint these clay lips, Lord, that my tongue may be the pen of a ready writer, that I may speak things that become sound doctrine, that nothing will come back void, Lord, but it will accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where to you sin, God. I pray for the reproving of the world, Lord, that the Spirit of God will reprove us of where we're wrong. Give us power and unction, Lord, to get it right. God, we love you. We thank you for the preaching of your word. I pray for the abundance of my heart that my mouth will speak. My heart may be filled with love. I give you all praise. If there's anybody lost under the sound of my voice, you'd save their souls. If they're lost by the way of the internet, listening online, you would save their souls. If they're sick in their bodies, I pray for healing, Lord. For they're discouraged this morning, that you would lift them up and we'll give you all glory and praise. For in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Yes. Give the Lord some praise for his word as you'll be in the house. I want to preach upon God's value system. God's value system. Now, when we think of value systems, we think of humanity value systems. And when you go to buy a car and the price of a car and what you have to pay for it. And, uh, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Kelly's Blue Book value system. But it will let you know how much a vehicle is worth before you go pay more than what it's really worth. But I want to let you know this morning, as you already know, that God's value system and humanity value system are on a total different scale. God judges things a lot different than we judge things. And that's what His Word is talking about here. I'm reminded in another gospel that Jesus talked about a man who had a barn full of goods. The Bible said that he was blessed with more goods. And besides giving some of his goods away, he built another barn that he might can hold all of his goods. And the Bible said, Thou fool, knowest not that tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. Even in this scripture right here, we learn that what will it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I want to talk about the value right off the bat about working. Because here in America, if there's anybody that knows about work, America, if you didn't know these stats, as I begin to read these, uh, these articles, the United States of America and Japan are the two hardest working countries in the world. I thought it might have been China because everything you buy around here is China made. But nevertheless, Japan and the United States of America, according to an article that I read, is the most hard working people in America. And they go by that simple reason because of the time that they work and they clock in until the times they take vacations. Wow. Now, in the, in the same essence, the Bible tells us that man should work. The Bible said that God worked for six days. If God worked for six days, he expects us to work. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. And I believe in work. I believe we should be hard workers. I don't believe we should just go out there and, and try to make a dollar. I believe the way you 
treat your boss man is the way you'll be treated somewhere or other down the road. Amen. I used to didn't think like that. I used to think of what I could make on Friday and it was payday and when Friday was over and I was looking for the next Friday and could care less what I did Monday through Friday. But that was when I was a sinner boy and I had no Holy Ghost inside of me to convict me of my actions. But when I got saved, I found out just how bad I'd done my boss man. And I want to tell you today, you can keep doing your boss man bad if you want to, but the Bible says that we will reap what we sow. And if we continue sowing laziness and don't be excellent in our spirits, when it comes to a job, we might just wake up one day without a job. And even if you do wake up with a job, it might not be the one that you want. Amen. So when we go to work, we need to do our very best on our jobs. A lot of people, when they begin to get hired on a job, the first thing they want to know is how much money they're going to make. Why? Why? Because that's the value system of a human. How much money am I going to make? And I tell you, there's nothing wrong with wanting to find out how much money you're going to make. But if you don't like the job, when you get the paycheck, the paycheck's not going to be worth it if you have to go Monday to Friday at a job that you don't like. Enjoy what you're doing. Amen. Because your life and your joy and your happiness means more than a dollar bill. Amen. And I know you may not think so when they first hire you, but after about two or three years of going to a job that you absolutely hate, you'll be re reevaluating your job, thinking, Lord, can I get out of this job? How many has ever gotten a little job saying, Lord, can I get out? <laughs> and God's probably thinking to himself, you know, I don't know what to do for you. You prayed for the job, now you want out of it. There's been many times we've asked the Lord, God bless us with a job. God bless us with a job that pays a lot of money. But I have learned over the years that the more money you make, the more responsibility comes with the money that you make. Nowadays, people want a lot of money, but they don't want a lot of responsibility. Amen. They want to sit at home while somebody gives them a check. It don't work that way, baby. It might work that way a lot in America, but that's not the right way of doing it. And the Bible says it's going to catch up with you. Come on. Be sure your sin will find you out the last want to do is to get all messed up with money. Amen. Our value systems are crazy. Uh, as I begin to read that article, there's some interesting stuff in that article, and I'm not much of a teacher, you know that by now, but I did. I do want to, to explain some of that stuff because the Bible says in the book of Genesis that God works six days, but what else does it say he done on the seventh day? Amen. He rested. Oh, Lord. Some of us don't know what that word means. Amen. Some of us are guilty when it comes to rest. Amen. Some of us think it's punishment to sit down and take a breath. Amen. I told you it'd be hard for me too. Because I'm going at it seven days a week. Six and a half. Sunday evenings I try to guard it to be lazy. When I say lazy, I'm gone. I'm gone. I don't want to move. I want my wife to bring me something to the couch. I don't even want to move. I mean those some lazy husbands. Grab your steel toe boots. 
is going to get rough for just a little bit, including myself. But we're living in a day and hour where materialistic things are more important than the real values of life. I'm going to show you that even in those statistics that the United States of America and Japan are the two hardest working countries in the world. Do you know some of the else they have that's more than anybody else? They have the top medical equipment and staff in the whole wide world. They got the best doctors, they got the best physicians, they got the best equipment to work on you with. You know what else goes along with that? They got the highest rate of stress related illness in the whole world. Amen. They know how to fix you, but they don't know how to keep you fixed. Because we always think we got to work, 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 work. I got to make that money, honey. Got to get that dough. Got to bring in them dollars, honey. Them bills are coming in. Got to got to have a little something to buy me some shoes with. The thing about it is we're rolling around on more money than we are walking around on. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We'd rather somebody know what our vehicle looks like and what our shoes. And Paul busts in the, in the book of Corinthians, I think it was, and said to have food and raiment. Be thou content. Do you know that somebody that's got a million dollars wants two million, one's got two million, wants three million, and there's a million. It's the holiday for laboring people to enjoy their sex. 
to cook barbecue. To cook barbecue, I say. To barbecue. Amen. Amen. To have a good time. To get out in the yard with family. Amen. Ooh, what happened to the days that people knew one another? What happened in the days when they sit on the porch and you talk to the neighbors? You got to know. No, no, we can't do that. There used to be a time in America when most things in the country shut down on Sundays because most people were in the house of the Lord. But no, no, no. It's just a is a lot different than ours, and I believe he's getting America's attention, whether we like it or whether we don't. Come on. Amen. God's value system, I have seen kids growing up in this church right here. It has been so hard to build a youth program at Oak Grove Assembly of God. It has been hard to build a church period. You may look around today and say, look, looking pretty good. Listen, there has been some challenging days. The reason for it is, is because you can get kids to be involved in every curriculum they have at school. They can be involved in beta club, cheering squad, music, football, basketball, baseball, can read you every stat that a player has that plays the game of ball. But when it comes to the Bible, they don't know one single scripture. They don't have a prayer line. They don't know the youth leader. They're not involved in the house of God. And I'm trying to tell you that But not no more. But God can rearrange that for you. That's right. That job that keeps you out so much, He can rearrange that for you. Right. I'm not saying He will, but I'm not saying He won't either. God can rearrange things in your life if you don't do the rearranging for yourself. Right. Because a lot with money. And nobody to share it with. It worth the hill needs. That's right. Amen. If you got all the money, all the bills, all the things of the American dream, boy, we want to build our homes. We want to build a nice picket fence around our home and sit there. But if it causes us our families, if it causes us church, if it causes us our very souls, it's not worth it. What's wrong with coming to church and giving God something? Amen. Amen. I was a drunk. Amen. I 
no drugs no more. You call me. But for me and my eyes, we're gonna serve the book. The book says you'll get me free. He set me free. Go on, I know that you're dead and you're open up those jail bars. And he said that I can go free. Come on, touch my head. I mean, I'll be rich. I mean, I'll have all my cash over. But I have been set free. I have been set free. I have been set free. I know I've been set free. I don't go around begging, oh God, I'm about to go smoke one. Oh God, oh God, let me get a few drugs. Oh God. None of that junk, man. That's why I'm trying to tell people a recovery program, but I'm too hard. They won't listen. I want too much to encourage me, dude. Lift me up. Get in the book. Take the baby.
besides letting that devil worry me all night long, I go ahead and go to the doctor just to make sure everything's good. Wow. And so I go through the routine, and he says, uh, uh, your eyes are perfect. There's nothing wrong with your eyes. Hallelujah. Come on. You got perfect vision. He asked me, have you ever had a migraine headache? I said, not that I know. Maybe one time in my life, I don't get headaches very often. He said, well, you have just had an eye migraine. Never heard of it in my entire life. I said, well, I don't know, but I don't want that rascal no more. Because if I don't know about the woods going by myself, nothing, I don't know what I'll do. But I said that to say this Just because Jesus has given us healing Doesn't mean the devil's not going to come by And try to steal your healing He come to steal He come to kill He come to destroy But you got to straighten your shoulders And stand up and fight the good fight of faith And tell the devil who you are And what belongs to you By his strength he is mine You say well I think you think that ain't good enough prosper, be in good health even as our souls prosper. If you've got good money and you've got good health but you're not spiritually quickened with the Lord, all of the rest of the first two things he said he was going to do for you is not worth nothing. You know how many good, healthy, money people go to hell? You cannot buy a ticket to glory. It's already been paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You're not going to buy your way in. They're not going to be standing there with a thermometer check your fever to make it into heaven, baby. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody's coming to the Father except it be through me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We are to value work. We are to value rest. We are to value relationships. I don't know if any of this message would be easy. We're living in a day and hour that authority doesn't mean a whole lot. Amen. People put their own value on who they want to obey. Right. I've even seen wives who talk to their husband like dogs. When the book says you're to submit yourself to him as unto Jesus. Amen. You see, I've had clapping all so small, but nobody clapped for that. Come on. It's out of style, but it's in the book. Amen. And you can flip pages if you want to, but it ain't going away. It's still there. Amen. You know what submitting means? That means doing stuff you don't want to do. Amen. That don't mean y'all agreed on McDonald's when you wanted to go to Burger King. No. Uh -uh. That means doing what he desires as long as it don't go contrary to, to the Lord's will. That doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're a slave. That doesn't mean, and, and most people who do that will have no problem in their husband loving their wives as Christ loved the church. Right. But relationships are messed up at home. Kids don't know how to obey their parents. Right. But there's a solution in the book for that too. It's called a rod. Right. Now I know we get we, we get put in jail nowadays just for using a belt too hard. But back in the old time of days, we'd say amen to a rod. Amen. 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 The water hose, come on, somebody. Amen. Or whatever they had handy to grab. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But nevertheless, I'm not telling you to go get you a stick and beat your child. I'm just saying, if they don't know how to obey, it's our responsibility to teach them. Amen. And some people like being moms and dads, but they don't like being parents. Amen. Wow. You do that again, you do to get them. How many times they want to do it for you with them? That's right. Hey. One more time. I swear I'm not Come on now. You're teaching them to grow up like that. Amen. Amen. I had parents that told me about one time, next thing you know, I, I can remember my stepdad. <laughs> he told me one time, just got to know him all new, just got married, just got another, and I was doing something. He told me, now he told me, one time. Somebody said, one time. <laughs> Be all you had to say one time. Next thing I don't know, I got dealt with the second go around. I didn't give a second chance. Right. But it made me grow up to respect things around my house. If mama talked, 
You better listen. Because my mama wore the pants around that house a lot of times, brother. You didn't want to rub her the wrong way. Amen. Amen. A lot of times mom's around the house. I'm going to go get your daddy. Sometimes I'd rather have daddy Amen. than mom. I don't know if you had a mama like that. But in the same hands that, that they whipped you, they, they loved you as well. Amen. Amen. Daddy's hands were hard as steel when I'm done wrong, but soft when I was crying. Amen. Our hands should be a hand to discipline, but also catch them once you discipline let them know what they've been disciplined for. Because if you stand out of anger, don't stand out of love. Some people say this is going to hurt you more than it does me. I mean, those lie. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 
talk until they go to church. It's not fun to hear. And I, I, I want to go back to the values not only of relationships but because I want to I want, I want kind of start landing right here. It's because relationships has to tie into finances. If you're too busy making money to sow into your family and relationships are going to struggle because of finances. Yeah. Not only relationships in your home, but relationships in the church. Amen. Relationships everywhere. Amen. And I've said this so many times. If you give the world 100%, that leaves nothing for the church. Right. That leaves nothing for your spouse. That leaves nothing for your kids. Yeah. And it's easy. Sometimes good credit is worse than bad credit. Because it's easy to sign. Oh, but it's hard to come up with that money every single month. And I know it's good that, thank God, here, here lately I've been working some side work myself, trying to get out of some debt my own self. But I thank God because he's been able to help me manage my time as well. I still have time for my family. I still, I don't have time for God. There ain't nothing on this earth, and you can mark my word. If anybody knows me at home, they know God's coming first. There's nothing on this earth more important. My homes are not important. I love my wife with all my heart, but she's not any more important than God. God's coming first in my life, and that's it. I'm not going to try to get him in my day. He's going to be in my day. He is my day, and everything else builds around me. Because I began to pray it just a while back because I was prepared for rainy days. Yeah. But I never was prepared for a pandemic. I never was prepared for a flood. And in this flood, the church has been challenged. I've been challenged. And I'm sure some of y'all have been challenged. Amen. In flood. But I began to pray. I said, God, even in a flood, you're, you're the Lord of the storm. Yeah. Help me. To get my house right. Amen. And sometimes you can get so far out that you don't just get back overnight. Amen. Right. Amen. Some people who are so far in debt that they can't get back overnight. Some people have been out of church so long that it's hard for them to just get back and swing overnight. missing time with their spouse. It's hard to get them back in the groove overnight. Amen. But I want to let you know this. It encouraged my heart. I began to pray. I said, God, if you'll provide it, I'll give it. Yeah. And I started breaking up my side, my side money that God would bless me to have jobs. And First of all, tithes and offerings. God had a building fund. I began to give more in the building fund. And you know, that don't make sense sometimes when you're going through storms and you feel like you're already stretched and you don't feel like you can make needs. But I'm telling you from a living experience, yield. I know it don't make no sense, but child, his, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are going my way. Give. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so, I would do that, and also, I would take some, some of my money and, and buy me and my wife and kiss and clothes, whatever we need. And then the other rest of it, the majority part of it, would go half to bills and half to check. Now, if I got one of those side jobs and just got a wild hair in me, how many's ever had a wild hair just pop up out of nowhere? Yeah. Let's just go have a good time. I firmly believe God would stop the extra work. I said that to say this. If you're here today and you feel like you're too far, whatever, whatever in your life you put before God, whatever in your life, whether it be finances or time, or you just don't give God, you don't show up to his house, you don't spend time in his word, you don't spend time praying. Listen, you make the first step. And I know sometimes when I put money in the checkbook from side jobs, some of them are small, some of them are bigger. I don't know. But sometimes it don't look like a whole lot when I put it in there. But you know what? It's not about the amount that we put. It's about the sacrifice behind me that I'm saying, God, I'm doing all I can to get where I need to be. Anybody catch that? So on Wednesday nights, you can say, hey, I'm going to knock off early. I'm going to get a shower and go to the house.
sacrifice for. You can make that sacrifice, but it's up to you. You can go home and boo-boo by how you're tired, how by your jaw, bone your bones and your joints hurt, and da 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 and come up with all those excuses. If you want, that's your life. I can't make you. It is your life. Or you could come and bring your kids to church and get involved in the church house and say, I'm not going to be a Sunday morning owner. I'm going to get involved in my church house and my church family. I'm going to be so let me tell you something. I'm not saying all this to try to pump my wings and that service up. I'm not. I'm saying this for a confirmed conviction that if you do God's house wrong, look out for your house. And I'm not saying that to scare you, to bluff you, to threaten you. I'm saying that because the book says it. Amen. The book says it. Amen. That they did not look after God's house. Amen. And everything about their life was messed up from their time to their finance. They put money with bags and holes in them. They kept Amen. making money, but it kept falling out. They, talk to me today. Amen. They kept making money and it fell out. Making money and it fell out. How many ever felt like you ain't got no time in the day? You just push for time. You put, oh, Lord, I wish the sun was just coming up. Oh,
for, I don't know how many years, just for me to tell you, but it was a long time he would come to me. We would pray together. We would pray. We would fast. Now, when you fast and don't get a breakthrough, sometimes that would discourage you. And we prayed many, many times. He said, Brother, I just don't think it's ever going to happen. And I would have to encourage you. If God's put that desire in your heart to be in his house, it is his will for you to be here. It is his will for you to be here with those kids. And one day he called me with the great news after years of praying and fasting and asking God to open that door. Brother, I finally got a job. God's blessed me. He's been able to be in the house. He's watched so many of them come, and a lot of them go. Amen. And you'll never quit loving those people. Just because they walk out, that doesn't mean your love changes. That's right. But he's called as a leader to be an example. And I think he's been a good example. Amen. I want to encourage you today. If something in your life has come up and has distracted you from serving God, you need to start marking that thing off your list. It may take you a couple years before you get he didn't go and quit his job. That would have been nonsense. Then he'd have been a failing in another part when he come home and couldn't provide for his family. Right. You don't do bad, you know, do worse to try to make a bad right. right. He prayed and let God open that door. Yeah. And when that door opened up for him, he went into it. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't like to tell his business. And I think he had to take a pink cut to get in there. Yeah. I may be wrong. But when you really want to go through a door and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, right. what's a few dollars less an hour? Right. I want to have the door in my heart. God's value system.